Hi, this is Gil Rossi, Investor and Funds Manager. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you the second part of uh, the compilation I made of the Daily Journal meeting with uh, Charlie Munger a couple of weeks ago. The first part, I compiled everything related to finance and investing. In this second one, I have compiled everything related to, to life in general some good quotations of uh, Charlie. I hope you, you like it and uh, let's, let's watch it. Kipling once wrote a famous poem called The Women to the effect that you should learn about women from him instead of do your, yourself. But he says, I know you won't follow my advice. I, I'm satisfied with the way things have worked out and I'm not gnashing my teeth that other people are doing better. And uh, I think that the methods that I've used, including the checklists, are the correct methods. And I'm grateful that I found them as early as I did and that the methods have worked as well as they have. And I recommend that other people follow my example. It reminds me of the key phrase in Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress. He says, my sword I leave to him who can wear it. Well, it's natural for people to think their own civilization and their own nation is better than everybody else. Ben Franklin was one of the wisest men who ever lived, and yet he made a lot of mistakes in the course of living his life. And of course, if he had a chance to do it over again, he would avoid those mistakes. We would all say that. However, the number of people who ever got a chance to do it again is zero. So it's a, it's a very theoretical discussion. There's an old German proverb I've always liked, and it says that man is too soon old and too late smart. And that's true whether you're Benjamin Franklin or Joe Klutz. Well, I don't have any wonderful new thoughts. You know, to the extent that my thoughts have helped my life, I, I think I've pretty well run the course. And uh, I don't think I'm likely to have any new thoughts that are going to work, work miracles either. And, but I find that the old ways of doing things still work. Uh, I've been engaged in recent years in trying to create a better type of student dormitory. And I find that by working at that, I can actually make some improvements even though I'm old. So I'm a... I'm kind of pleased that I'm still functioning at all. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to move mountains. Well, I think I'm alive because of a lucky genetic accident. And, and I don't think I can teach you how to retroactively get a new g accident yourself. The first rule of a happy life is low expectations. That's one you can easily arrange. And if you have unrealistic expectations, you're going to be miserable all your life. And also, if when you get reverses, if you just suck it in and cope, that helps if you don't just fretfully stew yourself into a lot of misery. And then if they, there are certain behavioral rules, uh, it, some of them, you know, Rose Blumkin had quite an effect on the Berkshire culture. And she had such a, she created a business with like 500 depression dollars that became a huge business. And you know what her mottos were? Always tell the truth and never lie to anybody about anything. And those are pretty good rules and they're pretty simple. And a lot of the good rules of life are like that. They're just very simple. And do it right the first time, Lee Quinn, that, that's, that's a really good rule. But what we've learned in the pandemic is that we can do with a lot less travel and a lot more Zooming. And I don't think that when the pandemic is over, I don't think we're going back to just the way things were. I think we're into a lot less travel and the, a lot more Zooming. And, and you know, I think the world is gonna be quite different. A lot of the people who are doing this remote working. They, a lot of people are gonna work three days a week in the office and two days a week at home. A lot of things are going to change. 
And, uh, and I expect that, and I, 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 I welcome it. And of course, without the method of learning, you're like a one-legged man in an ass-kicking contest. It's just not gonna work very well. Of course, if they bring in a brand new technology you don't understand at all, you're at something of a disadvantage. And my advice would be if, you're, if you have a fixable disadvantage, remove it. And if it's unfixable, learn to live without it. What else can you do? Frank you fix Wong what can from, be fixed, and what Frank can't Wong. be fixed, you endure. I think I'm not really equipped to comment on this subject until I can state the arguments against my conclusion better than the people on the other side. If you do that all the time, if you're looking for disconfirming evidence and, and putting yourself on a grill to make that is that that's a, a good way to help remove ignorance. What happens is that every human being tends to believe way more than he should in what he's worked hard to find out or what he's announced publicly that he already believes. In other words, why we while we shout our knowledge out, we're really pounding it in without we're not enlarging it. And, and I was always aware of that, and so I've accepted these damned annual meetings. Uh, I've, I'm pretty quiet. Well, Lee Kuan Yew had the best record as a nation builder. He took over a malarial swamp with no army, no nothing, and he turned that into this gloriously prosperous place and, and his method for doing it was so simple. You know the mantra he said over and over again? It was very simple, he said, figure out what works and do it. Now it sounds like anybody would know that made sense, but you know, most people don't do that. They don't work that hard at figuring out what works and what doesn't, and they don't just keep everlastingly at it the way he did. In Singapore, you get a savings account the day you're born. And if you don't spend the money, you, get the, you, you and your heirs get to spend it eventually. In other words, it is your money. So that to some extent, everybody buying medical service in Singapore is paying for it himself. And of course, people behave more sensibly when they're spending their own money. He just time after time, he would do something like that that recognized reality and worked way better than what other people were doing. And there aren't that many people like Lee Kuan Yew that have ever lived. So of course I admire him. I have a bust of Lee Kuan Yew in my house. Well, I hope you like this uh, couple of compilations I made. It's really great to have uh, Charlie Munger of 97 years old giving so much clarity in uh, a bunch of different uh, aspects of um, life, financing, everything really. I think it's a privilege to have him with so much experience and being able to um, express it so clearly. I think it's, uh, it's not uh, something that comes quite frequently, so we should uh, make the most of it and learn from it. So I, if you like the video, please give it a like. It helps my channel to grow. And also, if you want, subscribe so you can get alerts from the next, uh, when, I, when I post the next video. Thanks very much for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.